Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Kansas City Convention Center. It is Friday here at the Triple Crown NIT, the start of recruiting season for the 2026s. And thank you for joining VB Adrenaline's uh, coverage. I'm Darren, joined with Madison and Samantha. And Michelle is going to be out working the crowd as well. So we got a, a crew of thousands helping us this weekend. We're going to be doing interviews with many of the top prospects. And from two alumni of the NIT, what, what is something, Madison, we'll start with you, what's something you're really excited about or looking forward to this weekend? I mean, I just think that the energy in this gym is so amazing. And I remember coming here when I was younger and it was just so great to see such high level competition in the gym and being able to face that every single day. Not only are your parents watching you, but so many coaches are here as well. And it's just such a great and high energy environment that allows these girls to compete and train and get better at the highest level. And so that's something I'm so excited to see is the energy in the gym, how everyone's competing. It'll just be a great weekend. And Samantha, you and I have spent a little bit of time, you especially focusing on California, but watch some Texas. I think it's unique how they all come together from all over the country, and we're going to literally get to see best versus best. Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity, kind of like Madison said, just for these girls to compete against some of the best girls in the country. You know, we have talented Texas girls, talented California, and you kind of get to see the different styles of uh, club volleyball that they play. And like she said, it's a really good opportunity just to get in front of these college coaches early and start recruiting. So it's a really big opportunity for these girls, and we're excited to be here and cover it. Yeah, and we're, it's okay if we are fan kids as well, right? As you walk around, there will be a big-time college coach wherever you turn. And it's okay to um, stop and stare a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? I mean, I've done that so many times and I will still do it as I'm about to graduate. <laughs> yeah I mean all the flags just right when you walk in I think it's just a big attention you know it's a big like you said big name colleges. Yeah and Triple Crown has built this event you guys were in one of the original NITs and I think they told me it started with four teams um, and Mike Lingenfelter from Munciana was one of those teams and now um, we're in two different buildings there's going to be over 200 of the top teams it's in invite only um, and you're going to see so many of the top prospects let's talk about that really quick because for the 2026s right yeah it started but it gets real tomorrow yeah I mean these girls are just starting to begin their recruiting process and being in a gym talking about the high level competition and in front of college coaches like pretty much for the first time this season because this is the biggest recruiting event of the weekend. So that can add a little bit of pressure, but I'm super excited to see what these 26s bring to the court. Yeah, I think it's like you said, it's going to be definitely a lot of pressure. And that's one of the good things about getting out there so early is you get to these college coaches get to see these girls and how they, you know, how they play under pressure, how they interact with their teammates under pressure and how they just rise to the level of occasion. So it's going to be a really good opportunity just to for these girls. Yeah, to train and just continue to grow their games in a big atmosphere. And that's what we'll be doing. We'll be getting to talk with a lot of these top prospects from all over the country. And you got to remember, there's some really good unsigned 25s that are still looking for their home and college is looking to fill needs as well. So this is the biggest recruiting weekend of the year. Um, and everybody's going to be here. That's going to be exciting. But a little bit about what, uh, what we're going to do today is a huge day. Under Armour Next, we're zipping across uh, the Kansas City Metro to take in some of the Under Armour Next first invite camp. Uh, where talk about some top athletes. They'll be there. We'll be back here tonight getting sights and sounds from day one. There's camps going on, college camps, and then an unsigned workout. And then a lot of the big teams come in, and they'll get a practice in today uh, just getting a feel for the convention center. So a lot going on with us. Join us throughout the weekend on our social media. Uh, our daily show will be posted every night, and then we'll have some live interviews as well. So for our crew, this is the intro. We're excited for a great four days from the Kansas City NIT, sponsored by Triple Crown.
All right, everybody, welcome back to our daily show. Um, one thing with the uh, Triple Crown NIT, NIT, one of the big draws of this is the opening weekend for Division One coaches to be back uh, recruiting the open period, they call it. So for 26s, we've talked about this. This is a really big, uh, big event that started their big process. Go ahead. Yeah, a very big outside and opposite heavy class. I think there's a lot of depth in this position. One of the things that makes these athletes so special is actually their ability for most of them to go all the way around. So I think they utilizing the back row attack and just their all around game of passing and defense really sets this class of athletes apart. Yeah, and as you look at some of the names that are on the screen and some of the names you've probably already heard, um, we followed, everybody followed. They're probably looking to get a lot of attention on their courts from, uh, you know, big-time colleges. And it's just that. We've seen them through the National Training Day program with USA Volleyball where they focus on the all-around skill level. But you have some different personalities as well. Yeah, I would agree. I think you have a very quiet kind of personality of, yes, Henley right. Anderson um, and a duo with her and Riley Malloy out of Austin Skyline and just two really dynamic outside hitters, but more like quieter personalities. And then you have really just the energy getter is Hallie Thompson from Houston Skyline. Yeah, and then we talk about, you know, with the Apples, you talked about Sarah Hickman, who we've been able to see and interviewed once. We're going to talk to her again this weekend, but the true lefty at, at six foot four and climbing up the radar of a lot. But you have the West Coast, um, the West Coast, the down south, a little bit of the East Coast. One thing I'm excited to see is, is there a difference in style of play between the West Coast and the Texas athletes? Yeah, I think for Texas, you have a lot of really physical athletes that are just kind of jumping out of the gym, and it's going to be really unique to see some of these smaller outside hitters that are coming out of California, and then just to see how they quite match up with, you know, like you said, the big Houston juniors, um, right side Sarah Hickman, you know, just to see those kind of go out at the net, so... Yeah, and a lot more names will join this list by the end. Just something to start and some of the names to watch. We'll be back. Uh, we'll leave you with some highlights from today's action uh, at the unsigned camp and some of the practices going on. We'll be back to break down another position in just a little bit on VBAdrenaline.com. Back in the next position we're going to break down is the setter group. So a very stellar class of setters for the class of 2026. A very deep position with a lot of 6-2 potential setters and a lot of 5-1 as well. So, you know, for starters, we have the big name Blair Theobald out of Houston Skyline. So just a really physical setter. And I think I got the chance to watch her at NTDP, NTDPT. And she was just, yeah, an incredible leader on the court. And I think just her style of play just really, um, really just suits the Houston Skyline offense. You know, and what else I think about when thinking about Blair is that she knows how to run an offense. And I think that's the biggest part of being a great setter is you have to connect with your teammates and you have to connect with your hitters. And that's the biggest part about being a setter is because if you don't have those connections, nothing's going to work. And I think Blair knows how to run an offense. She knows how to connect with her hitters. She knows how to walk up to them after that set, give them the credit, but they also give it back to her. And I think that that builds a great relationship. Yeah, speaking of great setters, we have Genevieve Harris, you know, a big name out of NC Academy and just you know another great just really high IQ setter I think she just really has a lot of elements to her game and I think she's once again a big leader back there and then once in a 5-1 and then now we kind of go into 6-2 setters we have Madison Victoriano out of Dallas Skyline and Soraya Dennis out of Wave just two smaller setters but can really just like you said like I think have the ability to connect with all their hitters and as a 6-2 setter you know that's pretty hard so yeah for sure I mean you're only on the court for three rotations and so that can go that can go kind of quick and <laughs> for us to be able to watch these setters just do what they do in just three rotations like you know, it's so good for them to be able to get that experience and be able to, you know, build a relationship with the other setter that's also on the court. Like, yes, competition's a big part of volleyball, but like being able to have a great relationship with the other setter that's running the three rotations, like, you know, you can build off of one another, learn from one another and continue to grow your game. Yeah, and these are just some setters that we're looking forward to seeing this weekend and there's many more, so stay tuned. Hey, 
Baby Adrenaline, this is Madison Mori, and I'm here with Logan Parks, who was just selected as one of the invitees to the UA Next Camp. So, Logan, how are you feeling about that? Um, I'm feeling awesome. I mean, it was a super fun camp, and it was awesome playing with um, all these great athletes. So it was really good, and I'm loving loving it. So, and you had a stellar day today on the court. And so, what? How excited does that make you for? next January when you get to compete with two of the other girls here and then a bunch of other girls from the other how excited are you for that opportunity? Yeah, I'm super excited. I've met a lot of people at like uh, qualifiers and everything, so I'm kind of excited to see who's going to be able to play um, and go play with those great athletes. So For sure. And today was just day one. You now have a three-day tournament ahead, so what are you looking forward to for the weekend? Um, just getting back on the court with my team, um, playing some good competition, and seeing what we can do. For sure. Well, congratulations, Logan, and thank you for talking with us. Thank you. And now it is time to break down my favorite position, our liberos. And so one bro that really stands out to me is Erin Clark from AZ Storm. I mean, I've seen her in both the role as a DS and a bro, and I just think she truly takes over that court in the back row. And I think that is one of the biggest aspects of being a libero is you have to be gritty you have to want the ball you have to take leadership over the back row and so watching her has been super awesome and I can't wait to watch more of her this weekend um, what bro stands out to you yeah, I think you made a really good point. Just being able to kind of thrive in the libero and DS position, I think we see a lot of teams that, you know, have potential to kind of do both. So two that really stand out to me are Presley Thompson out of Wave, you know, a really talented team coming out of California, placed number one in the SCVA last weekend. So just a really talented libero back there. And like you said, just really commands the backcourt. And then also Henley Mosakowitz out of Houston Skyline. Just another great addition back there and just really runs the backcourt and service Eve. So really excited to see more of her this weekend too. Yeah, for sure. We are super excited to see all the bros out there on the court this weekend. That was our last position group today, middle blockers, a really talented and very physical group of athletes in the 2026 class. So for starters, we have Kiana Williams out of Dallas Skyline, just a really highly recruited, talented athlete that we're excited to see more of. And just two more great ones are Kinsley Young out of TAV and then Brooke Harward out of Arizona Storm. So Madison, who else are you looking forward to watching this weekend? You know, I'm really looking forward to watching Addison Cody out of Mizuno Long Beach. Um, the West Coast teams always have some big time middles out there and I just think she is a stud on the court and the way she runs in front, behind, the way she connects with her setters, it's a big part of the game and so I think that she just stands out really well on the court, brings a ton of energy to the court and I'm super excited to see what she's going to bring this weekend. Yeah, and lastly, we just one more to mention is Elena Hecke out of Minnesota Select. Just we got to see a little bit of her today at the UA Next Camp, and it was just a great addition. So just stay tuned for some more highlights and some more interviews from the today. We're here in Kansas City where the top talent is already here and we drove across town to Mavs Club to take a look at the UA Next Camp and what a high level day of volleyball. You know, we had some really talented athletes that are gonna be spending the whole weekend with us. So who stood out to you guys today? One of the girls that stood out to me was Shay Witherspoon. I mean, she was just unstoppable on the court. Huge vertical, can really get up there and put the ball down. And it was just super exciting to watch how much energy she brings as a big time prospect. And she was one of the MVP winners today. And it was super awesome to see her get that. I definitely think Taylor Deckard really stood out today. She was digging balls left and right all over that court. She's a phenom. She ended the day with a ticket to Orlando to go play in the big game, and I can't wait to see her work. Yeah, we had we spent the day. They broke up individuals at the beginning, and then they came together for some really high-level gameplay. And it was just really cool to see these players who are talented players across the country really come together and work um, work really well together. So, what what was the biggest thing that you think that they learned today at camp? You know, I think they learned how to adjust to adversity. Uh, in the beginning, we saw them do this warm up that <laughs> I've never seen been done as a warm up before, and it was kind of crazy, very lots of jumping, lots of moving around. And so, I mean, that was already adversity right at the beginning, but the girls did great with it. You know, they handled it like 
it was no other. And so it was super interesting to watch that. And then also being with new players, people you don't know, for sure. That was all, all new and great adversity for them to work with. That was a little bit of a recap. And now we'll hear from some of the golden ticket and MVP winners today. Hey VB Adrenaline, this is Madison Mori and I'm here with Shay Witherspoon who just finished up UA Next Camp. Shay, just tell me a little bit about today. Um, I think it was just a bunch of really good competition and there was some really good drills that we did and it was just a bunch of like fun and it was just, it's my first time so it's, it was a really fun camp and I really, just really enjoyed it. I think Shay stood out so much on the court today which is why she was one of the MVPs. Shay, just tell me a little bit about what does it feel like being named MVP of this camp? Um, I think it's a really. I don't know what to say. I'm You're sorry. Um, I think it's a really good like chance to like prove to like prove to everyone that I worked really hard. Cause in the off season, I always work really hard, and I put a lot of effort into this. So it's like it's really important to me that I got MVP because I really tried. Like I put 100% effort in everything I do. So it's really important to me. For sure, and so congratulations, and thank you so much for taking time to talk with us. Thank you. Thanks for spending time with us and just getting to hear a little bit of our recap of the UA Next Camp. It was a really great experience, and one of the things they really honed in on was really making about volleyball and, you know, growing the game for these athletes and, you know, not making it so much of a, maybe of a media or a little bit of TikTok, I think, really focusing in on just growing their abilities and getting them ready for a really spectacular weekend today at Triple Crown.